right. Welcome to the IHEP Hour. I'm Dave Craybill with IHEP Michigan. IHEP Michigan is a member-based association that advocates wellness in people and the planet through hemp, and it begins with the farm move. Uh, with us today, host, as a pr hosting is uh, Mike Brennan from MI Tech News. Hey, how you doing out there? And uh, so anyway, so uh, just want to say welcome to the show and, sit and sponsoring the show. Uh, we'd be interested in hearing from you. Uh, uh, we reach a lot of hemp farmers. We reach a lot of people that work with hemp farmers to pro provide supplies and whatnot. And if that's something that uh, sounds appealing to you, let us know. Uh, so uh, thanks very much for joining us. And I'll be turning it over to Blaine Bechtold and he'll introduce our first guest. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the IHEMP Hour for Thursday, April 30th. Um, before I introduce the guests here, I want to talk a little bit about a project we've been working on for the last week, and we finally got the, the green light to go with it. We have a company in South Carolina that is making hemp masks, and um, we talked to, um, you know, everybody wants to help out the frontliners and do what we can do. Well, um, the Department of Agriculture has a lot of inspectors that go out to the farms, and to the, they need help as well with, with getting their, their personal protection equipment. So we're teaming up with this company and we're going to provide masks to MDART. Uh, they're hemp masks, they're reusable. Um, I'll try to get a picture up here by the end of the show. But um, uh, so we're going to do a little kind of a GoFundMe kind of thing, PayPal. And we're going to try to get at least 200 masks for the department. These masks normally run anywhere from 18 to 20 some dollars a piece. We've got a pretty good price with the company that we're working with. And so, um, we're trying to raise around $3,000, and we're also going to try to get the little strap that goes behind the back of the head that Dave showed the other day on our Facebook thing, um, which takes the pressure off of it being on the ear. They're going to be wearing these masks for a long time when they're out there, so we're going to try to make it a little more comfortable for them. So we'll have more about that, uh, keep, keep tabs on that, but we're going to help everybody uh, help us out and try to raise about $3,000 to get these masks to the department. So. So we'll talk more about that, but right now, uh, Brian Heron, O'Heron, uh, with Arborall is going to talk to us about the Hemp Protect program. It's too late to get the regular crop insurance anymore. That deadline has passed. That was March 15th. And so this is another form of way to protect in your crop from risk and strictly due to weather. So, and then uh, Ryan Fox, we'll have him come on. He's going to talk a little bit about hail insurance, which is also available. So, Brian? Um, if you want to take over, we're, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your knowledge with us. Sure. Thanks, Blaine. Can, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right. Is my screen up? It, it is. is. Awesome. So Brian O'Hearn here um, with Arbol, um, had, had been with eWeather Risk. So we were a pilot program for the USDA for specialty crops. So if there was not a crop insurance program available, they could come to us. So hemp is a perfect fit for us. Uh, if you think about the, the risks on growing crops, um, Pioneer Seed had a nice survey that, that they had, you know, questioning, is it, is it the seed type? Is it the soil? Is it the chemical? What, what is it? And it's ultimately the weather. So, um, you know, that, that's going to be the most important determinant. I'm going to go through a few slides here about what we do. We have a multi peril program for hemp um, that, that we launched just this year. Um, so if folks want to take a look at that, I'm probably not going to get into the details of it. I'll go through an overview, but I'll go ahead and kick, kick things off here. So if you think about uh, the coverage that's available, as, as Blaine said, um, the, the USDA pilot program had a number of limitations. I'll do a comparison of them, of them soon. But the, the most important one is, is basically that, you know, sales closing dates already passed. The whole farm is already passed. Um, <clears throat> so there, there is some private crop hail available, but at least one of the carriers is only doing 1,200 an acre uh, on that. You have to have a license. You have to have a processing contract. With our programs, you don't need a, a, a processing contract. You, you do need a license. 
Um, we're covering industrial hemp, not not marijuana. Um, so um, the the problem with those programs is that they don't cover if the THC level goes hot. We do not test the THC, um, and so if you think mm -hmm. about the weather perils, it's the 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 biggest perils mm -hmm. are too wet at planting. Um, I was talking to Blaine this morning. He said he got, I think, four inches of rain the last week or so. He'll go through some soil moisture and uh, forecast maps here. But, you know, 20, 2019 broke a record for the U.S. for being the wettest year. Uh, 2020 is on track to, to break last year's record. And if you look at the last five years, you know, they're all top, top 10 type years. Um, so from Vote Hemp's 2019 license report, um, you know, there were close to 240,000 acres of hemp planted last year, and only about half of that was harvested due to crop failure, non-compliant crops. Um, if, you, if you saw some of the reports, I think Arizona, close to half the crop tested hot. You know, does that tell you that you and Michigan are in a good place to be because it, the elevated temperatures are, are a big contributor to elevated THC levels? So can, can you really grow um, non-hot hemp in, in the desert? Nevada had a pretty significant portion test hot as well. Uh, so most of that loss production was due to adverse weather. And, and that's, what, that's what we're in the, in the business to do, protect against those perils too wet at planting, too wet at harvest. You know, we can do drought programs in the multi peril We have an excess heat um, during the flowering period. Um, you know, in Michigan, and, and depending on the seed type, we've got some nice seed seed charts of, of which varieties might go hot, but but most of the states have done a pretty good job of, of, of you know, not allowing, you know, seeds that 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 will go hot but you know it is a risk interestingly in the um some of the crop hail covers last year and this year um those companies were going to require the crop to go to maturity and then they were going to test it and if it went hot you know by maturity and the hail naturally would cause stress they weren't going to provide cover so you know, how, how much of a limitation is that on the coverage is, is pretty significant. So, you know, our hemp protect program, um, whole farms was available anywhere hemp was legal. 508H only pilot counties, our program's available anywhere where it's legal. No experience required. THC levels are not assessed. That's a big deal. One of the big limitations on the 508H was um, that one year of experience and you needed to have a production contract and they had some pretty significant crop rotation limitations. So we had some people in Oregon that had been growing for you know, over five years and you know, their, their plot was only gonna grow hemp so they didn't qualify for the program. Um, limitations on dollars. We, we've had people do ridiculous amounts, you know, if they're growing it for seed. Um, you know, we've had folks think that it's worth a million an acre. So if they want to pay for the coverage, they can. So the, 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 the dollars of limitations on coverage is sort of naturally self-limiting. You know, if we're going to cover three, where, three weather perils, you know, the likelihood of one of those happening is relatively high. So the, the rate that we're trying to target is 10 to 15 cents on the dollar. So there's no government subsidy in it. You know, in, in frequent cases, it's paid 100% in, in the last few years. We've got an, an early freeze program that's not currently included in Hemp Protect, but is going to be coming. My feeling is if you get planted on time, it's not really going to be an issue unless you're at elevation. So um, not sure when folks are planning to harvest up there, but it, we, we can tell you when the, when the early and average freeze dates are, if you're going to get harvested before then, which we would recommend, um, you know, you probably don't need the freeze coverage. So we have the prevented plant replant coverage, the other programs did not. 
Our sales closing dates can be as close as 15 days before you plant. So they're still eligible. You know, if somebody's planning to plant May 15th, which I would think is a little bit early for Michigan, um, you know, we've, we've had a pretty cold finish to the, the spring this year or start to the spring. But if someone was planning a 515 plant, they'd have to have it bought by May 1st. If they're planning on a June 1st, it would have to be bought by May 16th. Um, if you're later in June, just factor in 15 days ahead of time. From the eligibility standpoint, um, you know, we're, we're covering processors, farmers, investors, lenders. We, we actually have some folks, the growers that, that are looking as, at the weather protection as one of their assets uh, to take to their investors. Um, so, you know, that, that's something that, that we have familiarity with and, and can work with anyone on if they are trying to get some funding or loans. So here I'm gonna do a brief um, outlook. Um, these just came out, they come out this third Thursday uh, of every month. Um, the National Weather Service's long lead forecast. And you can see on the left, this is the, the month of May, um, you know, really looking like the, the Central Plains is gonna get socked, um, a lot of moisture coming up from the Gulf, but you can see a good two thirds of the US is, is projected to be wetter than average. Then, then we get over to the, um, the May, June, July outlook and you know, all of Michigan, all of the Corn Belt looks, looks particularly wet. Um, hemp does not like wet feet. Um, you know, if you're planting seeds or transplants or clones, um, none of them are going to want to go into to, to, to super wet soil. So, you know, we, we really like the idea of these excess precipitation hedges for the spring at least. You can do the hemp multi peril program now, or you can just do the excess rain at planting and see what kind of crop you get up and then you can add the other coverages later. Next slide is the calculated soil moisture map. This is as of yesterday uh, up through, what was that, Tuesday. So they, they publish every day. Um, I, I, I did the presentation yesterday, so I was just able to grab the day before, but you can see these are 500 millimeters above normal. Um, in sort of this, this green color, which covers the western half of Michigan. You know, if you just got another four inches of rain, you're probably closer to the 600 millimeters. Uh, and that's, you know, 25 millimeters to the inch. So 500 millimeters is 20 inches or close to two feet. Um, the soil moisture ranking, you know, you're, you're setting some new records up here in the dark green as far as the soil moisture. Uh, so, so that's, that's a big focus that I have is, is protecting against your, your crop getting washed out as you're getting it put in. So with Hemp Protect, um, it's a multi peril weather index product, protects against excess rainfall at planting and harvest and high temperatures during flowering. Again, you know, if you're in, in, in upper Michigan, you know, that, that, excess heat might not be an issue. Um, so you could just do the two wet at, at, at planting and harvest. We can also hook you up with some folks on the hail um, if you're not already working with providers there. But the way they work are purchases are paid if the weather values meet the index triggers during predefined coverage periods. And so you're, you're just basically having to come up with when do you think you're gonna start planting when do you think you're gonna start harvesting and, and how many dollars an acre you wanna cover? So, you know, we have folks covering um, just their planting or replant costs. Um, we have folks going up to, as I said, you know, ridiculous amounts of money for the, 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 the CGB and CBD. So they're, you know, all, all sorts of levels you, you can determine. 
I had a partner that that was one of our owners in eWeather Risk. He's down closer to Monroe um, in Michigan. He's planting 24 acres. He's doing, I think, 10 for seed and 14 for oil. So uh, I'll, I'll go through an example of what he bought here at the end. And folks, feel free to jump in. I don't really have a chat box open. So if somebody wants to jump in and shout, you know, let me know as we go through. But, but the way we did these is, is sort of pre-canned. Um, the Hemp Protect 110, it starts to pay one inch above average um, during planting and harvest and 10 heat units above average during the flowering window. The way these work is you'll put a planting date in. So if you put in a June 1st planting date, it'll pull that, that moisture window back 10 days. So it'll start at May 22nd and then it'll run it through June 10th. Um, because if it's too wet before you plan to start getting planted, it's gonna be a problem. So just doing a 20 day window, if you wanna look at a shorter window or a longer window, we can do that in another, another platform. The, the 220 is a little bit higher deductible. It's two inches above average during planting and harvest and 20 heat units. And then the 330 is the most, what I call out of the money, starts to pay three inches above average during planting and harvest and 30, what I'm calling DDUs, which kind of like a growing degree day, these are damage degree units. So once you get high temperatures, like a daytime high above 95, we're, we're treating that as a damage degree unit. So if it's 100 degrees one day, you get five damage degree units. If it's 98, the next day you get another three, so you've got eight. So if it cools off and it's below 95, nothing happens. So, so once these go into the money, you, you never lose value on them. So other important details, the coverage applies regardless of the THC level. There's no acreage reporting. There's no proof of loss. There's no claims process. The premiums are due 10 days ahead of the start of the interval. Uh, we've set this up to pay by e ACH and get a 2% discount. We're using, for, for those of you that, have, that do the pasture, rangeland, and forage, um, those are like a 0.25 by 25 resolution. So it's closer to like a 15 mile square. The ones we do are closer to a three mile type, type square. So we're, we're using PRISM data, which is now the official data of RMA. Um, and so, you know, that's available throughout the country for uh, temperature and precipitation. So here's an example of, of what my, my, my friend bought down in closer to the Toledo area. He's growing in the Erie Township. Um, the, this is using a pasture rangeland and forage grid. He's doing 24 acres at 10,000 an acre coverage. He's got pretty, he's got everything is tiled. It's pretty well drained. He wants to get started planting near the end of May. And so we're doing this time window of 522 to 610. It shows you what the average precipitation is. It's 2.1 inches. The wettest year, close to seven, more than a half foot of rain. I think we'd all say that if you get a half foot of rain in 20 days, um, that, that on top of what's already wet, it's gonna be an issue. So here we, we gave him a couple different deductible levels. We said, you know, if, if you start to get paid above 2.1 inches, well, one, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. And two, the likelihood of that happening is gonna to be too high, so it's gonna to be too expensive. So, you know, if we do an inch and a half deductible, you add an inch and a half to 2.1, starts to pay at 3.6, pays 100% at 6.82. Well, how did we get to this payout per excessive inch? Well, you know, 6.82 minus 3.6 is 3.22. You divide 240,000 by that spread, you get the 74,000 per excessive inch. These actually pay per one hundredth of the inch. So if you got 3.61 inches, you'd get 
$745 back. Uh, shows you where you get your premium back. So you've recovered all your premium in this case at 3.91. In this case with the two inch deductible at 4.29, he said that I, I've got this tiling, I'm well drained. I want the, I want the sort of catastrophic protection the, the cheapest rates that we'll do is, is, is a 6% rate. So this is pretty darn close to the, the, the cheapest you can get. You can also see when it last paid out or the payout history on these, happy to provide you with those. You can say that you know, in this time window. And another thing we can do is help you consult um, you know, if the planting window that you've chosen um, has been particularly wet lately, you might be better off going five days later or five days earlier. So we can, we can help you get those worked up. In, in our program, so we've got an excess rain, which is just pure um, excess rainfall. Uh, we've got a heat unit product on corn. Uh, we've got a drought program um, that currently is just three month intervals, but we're working on customizing that. I've got a, a relatively closer to 45 minute um, video recording on this channel. I think Blaine and, and his, his folks are going to send out this PDF so you can click on any of those links. Uh, it'll have my contact information as well. Um, we are working or, or socializing an idea to give um, IHEMP members a discount from the pricing that you see. So we'll be in further discussions and, and outlays about how that, that might work. Um, and then kind of my catchphrase, uh, some people attribute this to, to Mark Twain. It was actually Charles Dudley Warner, but everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Well, now you can. You know, it's the biggest determinant of whether you're gonna have a good crop or not this year. Um, if, if the, these rainfall amounts continue as they are. Last year, we had a lot of people get planted relatively late, and then that brought in the, the fall freeze. It also brought in reduced yields because they weren't getting planted in the optimal time frame. So with us, you know, you can protect against that, that um, you know, to delayed or, or lost production um, for it being too wet at planting or your replant costs, uh, as well as as you get into the fall, you know, if you get six inches of rain or 10 inches of rain at harvest, it's gonna be a disaster. So, you know, those, those are the, the, the key points I wanna get across. You know, it, it you know, folks, you know, say, say it's a weed, but it actually takes some pretty fine tuning to get a high CBD oil crop. Uh, University of Kentucky has some pretty nice uh, extension brochures that it's very hard to produce a high CBD oil crop without it going hot. Um, so, you know, there's there's some finesse. I'm glad you guys are are at it. Um, Michigan, I think, is a is a opening up, and I think is you know we we look forward to working with you up there. So so that's what I had. I'm happy to you know get folks on the platform and. And, and get you some custom quotes um, later, or we can institutionalize it for, for iHemp. This is Blaine and I talked for the first time this morning. So, you know, we're just, just getting things kicked off. I'm, I'm glad you had to reach out. This is a, you know, really the only, the, the government program had so many limitations. We did not see very few people bought that program. Um, you know, if they continue to do it by a county basis, if they continue to do it by requiring crop rotation uh, and continue to do very small coverage amounts, I think, you know, you, you'll be needing to have these private products. So Blaine, you're on, you're on mute still. So if you wanna. You can hear my lips moving, but you couldn't hear me, could you? Exactly. So, you know, a lot of farmers, especially being small and new on this, you know, couldn't get the uh, the crop insurance. So, um, so this is a great product to have available for people to be able to at least try to protect their risk somehow. I think so. And so, what's what's sort of your your view of when you 
folks are going to be planting up in in Michigan this year? Well, I would say probably some will probably be planting within the next two weeks, I think. Yeah. Most probably won't plant till about the 1st of June, somewhere around there. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing. And and like my friend, what, what he did with his coverage for the end of May, again, with that 15 day sales closing date, you know, the May 22nd, you'd have to have be, be, be looking at things in the next week or 10 days. June 1st is a couple of weeks off still, but it's, it's definitely here to, to, to be looking at, particularly with the, the rains and the, the gales and everything else that I've seen up on the, uh, up on the lakes. Yeah. I mean, the way there was some farm work that was being done um, this last week, you know, some fields getting prepared and everything, but now I'm sure that we're shut down for a good four or five days here now before people are going to get back in the field and that's if it stops. So, yeah. Yeah, and and then the other thing, if if you guys are doing corn, or we we've, we've got some guys we're working with down in Iowa, and, and he was already done planting his corn and was about halfway through his beans, but he said, I need to have my hemp, you know, cut, dried, and stored by September twentieth because that I I need I need my eighteen hour days to do my corn, mm -hmm. so you know that's mm -hmm. that's probably a good good time frame. So, and, that, and that's a good thing you mentioned that. I mean, we're talking about hemp, obviously, on this show because most of people are growing hemp, but you do have products just like this for other crops as well, too. So, Exactly. And, and whether you believe in climate change or not, the volatility is, is definitely increasing. So um, the, the, the rainfall events are getting wetter. The, the drought events are getting drier. Um, you know, there does seem to be some warming happening. The more the warmer the oceans are, the more evaporation there is and there's more rain to be had. So I really like the excess rainfall protections at, at planting and harvest. Um, we've had some folks, I think in Wisconsin went hot last year because, you know, it just kept raining all summer and stressed the plant that way. So anything you want to think about, we can, we can take a look at. All right. Brian, a quick question for you that uh, prism data is that yeah that a subscription based source no or? no um we can give you access to the underlying data if you want to take a look at it i was just um, curious yep. yep it's out of oregon state um so they they put that together um okay. so i'm a crop adjuster for um for farm bureau so i mean you do need to make that um uh, public there but um, I use that when I do a lot of my claims and it's amazing how that product works, how accurate they are with, they can tell you where hail is at. And it's pretty, pretty interesting hmm. program, pretty robust. Program. Cool. Mm -hmm. Does uh, anybody have any questions for Brian? If so, please put them in the chat box. Yep, there's a chat feature generally in the bottom of your screen, a little orange box. Mm -hmm. Um, and okay, well, well, put your questions there, got them. Let's move on to uh, to Ryan. Ryan, thanks. Uh, um, I'm sure you're going to stick around in case anybody's got some questions we can answer. So, but uh, Ryan says uh, Fox is going to cover a little bit on hail insurance. Uh, I did take that last year on my crop just to protect it that way because that's all they had available. Um, this wasn't available, and I couldn't get the regular crop insurance. So. Brian, uh, how about if you take it over and give us a little bit of information on the hail insurance? Yeah, and Brian, if you could stop sharing your screen, please. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> that would help. <laughs> All right. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? We yes. can. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I just talked to Brian for the first time uh, yesterday. Um, so I'm appointed to, to work with Arbol on some of their hemp products. So when um, I work with Blaine a lot, so, uh, cause I'm a Farm Bureau agent and Blaine is a Farm Bureau adjuster. So um, when he talked to me about this, um, I thought about this product uh, that Arbol does. So I'm glad that Brian had the time to meet with us cause that's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Like he said, um, the multi peril crop insurance through the federal government, which um, is one of the primary things that I can sell outside of um, private products, which I do as well. Um, but is, is pretty limiting. Um, as you guys probably know, it's, um, 
pretty tough to sell because you had to have, you know, you had to have grown it last year. You have to have at least one year's worth of history. Um, and it's pretty limiting because if you were new, you can't get a new producer status. Um, it was, it was pretty tough to get involved. So some of these private products are, are nice to be able to give you some kind of protection because you're going to have a lot of money um, socked into that ground and you want to have at least some kind of protection. So um, outside of what Brian has to offer uh, with Arbol and that Hemp Protect product, uh, we also have some other private products at Farm Bureau that we can offer through uh, regular crop hail. Um, we don't have quite a, a broad of perils that we protect. Um, primarily the, the peril that we're going to protect against is, is um, hail, so, um, but it's pretty affordable. So um, I know depending on where you're located, hail isn't a, a, a huge primary concern, but it can be a, a concern as we're going through different stages of whatever kind of growth you're in. So, um, but the one thing you do have to be prepared for that Brian's product um, did or didn't protect against or does protect against is if you go hot, it doesn't matter. So ours, if you do go hot, you do lose your coverage. So keep that in mind. So um, you can you can do protection on crop hail for which is just another private product that Farm Bureau offers. So it'll protect primarily against hail. That's your primary cause of loss. So if, if a hail storm comes through and knocks you out, um, you can protect for seed and you can protect um, for fiber and you can protect uh, for CBD. So, and those coverage levels are a little bit different for each one of those. So you can protect up to $600 for both seed and fiber, and you can go up to $2,400 on CBD. If you want to go higher for those acreage levels, and that's per acre, um, I can get authorization to go higher, but I'm pre-authorized to do $600 for seed and fiber and $2,400 without having to go to my, um, my head underwriter and ask permission to go higher. So if you're if you want higher than twenty four hundred dollars for CBD, for instance, um, I may be able to go higher than that. But I have to go to the underwriter, and then I need some kind of maybe a contract from a processor or something like that to show that hey, um, this is going to be more valuable than that. So, um, but we need to have something in place. So, but you also have to have a license and all those kinds of things that. Um, that you know you're kind of used to having to, to deal with. Um, the process for this is uh, fairly simple. Blaine, you went through it. You know, you just have to show me your license. Uh, we have to do an acreage report. Uh, you can get coverage bound. You know, we don't have the the, the two week thing, um, uh, the window where you have to have it in. You you can bind coverage um, within 24 hours. Uh, prior to. So that's one of the things that's actually kind of nice. So if, if there's a storm coming, um, you can, you can give us a call prior to, you know, you can't, you can't call like, you know, like you when your house is on fire, uh, you can't call the insurance man and say, I need the, you know, I need an additional million dollars of coverage on my home. Um, but uh, if, if you can see the weather outlook coming um, a couple of days prior, and it looks like there's going to be some nasty storms coming through, um, you can give us a call and we can add some hail coverage onto that. So keep that in mind. Um, but it's always nice to have it uh, in place uh, way ahead of time so you know it's there and you're not having to worry about it. Um, you're not trying to get a hold of somebody before it's too late. But um, those are the basics. Um, you know, uh, on, on seed um, hemp coverage, you have a deductible of 20%. Uh, if you have 100% loss, you'll get paid uh, 80% depending on the coverage level that you choose. Um, if you have, if you're going to go for fiber or CBD, it has a 10% deductible. Those are mandatory. Um, so you'll get paid up to 90% if you have 100% loss on those. Um, and then they're going to come in, do the whole testing, make sure they're not hot, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, crop question, Ryan. Yep. At what point do they, so when you claim the loss when you make the claim is when they're going to test for the levels? Yeah, it, it depends though. Um, you know, if you have a hundred percent loss, then we need to have a test right away. If, if you have a, if you have a loss and, and let's say you have like a 30% loss. Mm -hmm. um, so then you're obviously still want to keep 
raising what you do have, then we, you're going to have to wait to get paid until you reach completion and then test um, to see if you have anything that's hot. So okay. before you can get paid. Okay. So basically, Cause if, yeah, because the last thing you lost. want is to get paid and then all of a sudden, you know, you get paid and then you're not hot then and then you go and then you find out, you know, a month and a half later and all of a sudden you went hot. And then we're going to say, yeah, you got to pay, pay, pay back money. That's the worst case scenario. Okay. So if I have a, so if I have a hailstorm in July, damages mm -hmm. 20, 25 percent of the crop, mm -hmm. they come out, they look at that, they, they, they document that, mm -hmm. but then they're not going to pay until the end of the year when we harvest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cause we got to test it. We got to, we will, we have to have certification that it was tested and yeah. Um, let's see if we got any questions. Um, so one thing I do want to make a note too is that uh, we appreciate both Ryan and Brian uh, talking about the program today, but we want to let you know that there are other carriers out there that do carry the insurance as well. So mm -hmm. maybe your current carrier might offer it. I don't know. Uh, Tony, one of our members, has put some information up here about their company that they carry it. We'll get Ryan and Brian's numbers will be available uh, for everybody on the end. So um, yep. appreciate that. So yep. Any other questions anybody has on uh, for Brian or for Ryan? Quiet crowd, huh? Yeah, a little bit today. Yeah, we got to let us. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thanks. Um, appreciate that very much. Again, people put your questions in. I'm going to move to the next phase of of uh, this. We can wrap it up. We try to keep this to an hour. Um, so there has been um, you know, some talk about some disaster programs, some more stimulus programs this last week. Um, little details on the USDA programs. We do know that more money was put into the PPP, the Paycheck Protection uh, Program. If you haven't applied for that and you do qualify, certainly you should try to apply for it. Um, hopefully your banks are working good with you and, um, it's, and I, if you have an accountant, usually if the accountant will put it in for you, that's a pretty good way. Uh, to get that done. And you might add it's on a first come, first serve basis. So if you don't get in real fast, it's probably going to dry up in a week or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so if you, if you haven't applied for it yet um, and you think about it, just get that, get it in there. If you need some help, give me a call. I'll try to help you. Um, the first thing is check with your bank that you're working with right now and see if they are doing the program. They have to be a small business um, lender. And most banks are. Some credit unions are aren't, but most most banks are. So, um, so you know, we talk about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, again, there are uh, now it is made clear that uh, hemp farmers are available for the SBA loan program. Uh, as far as the economic injury disaster loans, uh, those are available. There's a lot of information it's on the Small Business Administration website. Um, and there's help for cultivars they talk about here, but again, very few details have come out on this. Um, there is the, um, the called the WIP program that is available. Uh, that's for wildlife or wildfire, hurricanes, and uh, indemnity program. Um, so that's available to apply for as well. That's mostly really is going to cover the row crops more than this. Um, the other assistance um, through FSU Farm Service Agency, they have the direct loan program, the micro loans, direct farm ownership loans, organic certification cost share program. So if you're thinking about trying to get uh, um, organically certified, there is some money to help cover that. Uh, farm storage facility loans, that could be for bin storage or flat storage. And specialty loans for minority and women farmers, beginning farmers, Native American tribes, and others. So there's a farm uh, loan discovery tool you can go to from USDA and uh, that'll help. You can walk through that step to see if you qualify for any of those loans. And again, if you have any questions on them, you can give me a call and I'll try to help you work through those. There are some non-federal options as well that are available. Uh, we'll try to get, we'll get that information up on the site. Um, so, so not really a whole lot in there, but a few things. Uh, and we'll keep you tabs on it as more details come out from USDA on what they're going to offer for their programs through that. On that. Um, interesting thing came out. The uh, We talked about last show, the um, 
the, the virtual webinar that NOCO did for Earth Day. While they come out some information on solstice, summer solstice, they're going to have another virtual webinar. Going to be on the 16th through the 19th. Not too many more details out on that yet, but just wanted to give you a heads up on that. I just read that today. Um, so I talked to Gina. Our, our next show, we're going to have we're going to have Gina um, on from MDART to give us, you know, some of the details for this year's program, answer some questions. I was asking her, well, what can we help to get the word out for you? What's going on? And she said, well, first of all, we got to tell you that uh, Denise, who handles the um, licensing part of it, she's been on that mandatory layoff um, for two weeks. And so if you put your application in for a grow license, um, they're going to get to them. Um, it's just going to be a little bit because she's laid off for these two weeks. And so you expect a little delays there is what she said on that one. Also, she wanted to mention that there's some, some growers from last year that A, haven't paid yet some of, their, some of their stuff to get their licenses. So obviously you're not going to get another license if you didn't pay for last year. And then also a lot of them haven't completed their surveys and that kind of stuff. So make sure, please, that you're checking your email. The primary way that MDART is communicating with all of us is through email. Check your scam, spam boxes, that kind of stuff. Um, make sure that you're replying timely back to them if you have some things that need to get in. And uh, again, they'll, they're will they going to get on these as soon as they can they get, when she gets back to work. But right now, they got a little, little hold on that. Um, there's also a Friends of Craft Flower uh, has started a GoFundMe page. Um, there's some states in the Midwest that have had resistance from their legislators and their government on being able to sell uh, craft flower, hemp flower, smokable. And so they started a little fund me page to help with legislation and to be able to fight the good fight there. So if any of you uh, wanna go visit that page again, it's a GoFundMe for uh, Friends of Craft Flower and uh, do some donating there, that'd be great on that. Um, let's see, there also is, um, if you have, um, if you have failed acres, and this is mostly for wheat right now, it could be crops a little later, but if you have wheat that's failing this is for farming, you need to make sure you report that to uh, your FSA office as well, of course, your crop insurance agent if you have that, but the FSA office. And next week, we'll talk a little bit about how to certify your acres at the FSA office. Although it's not required under the Michigan program this year, it will be for next year. And it's a pretty simple process, takes a while like any good government program to take care of, but um, we might want to do that this year, certify your crops this year, get everything in place so that it's not such a big deal next year. Pretty simple to do. And we'll talk about that uh, again on next week's show. Um, also, um, National Farmers Union is hosting a webinar on how co-ops fit into agriculture. Uh, again, a free webinar. It's going to be May 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll make sure we get that up on the calendar of events. But Wanted to make you let you know about that. I know a lot of people have talked about co-ops and doing a co-op for hemp, so it might be good to sit in on. I've certainly got it marked on my calendar and I've already registered, so. All right, uh, any any questions, Dave? Maybe you've been monitoring that. Any questions we need to get to the guys? Uh, we just had uh, Kolar ask about uh, banks. So if anyone has any positive experience with banks in the hemp industry, please put them in the chat there. Uh, we have a relationship with North Star Bank, and they told us not to tell anyone. <laughs> so, that's our little secret. We didn't say that. I just said it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been a year, but uh, so they're just experimental. Like a lot of banks are not opening up. We use Square on the website. You know, we have a CBD specialty account through Square. Um, you know, reach out to us if you have questions uh, or if you have ideas. Uh, there's, we're still looking for options. I, I, I still think it hinges on the FDA uh, finalizing, you know, approval of CBD to, you know, have the banks feel comfortable to play safe with that. Or federal legalization of cannabis overall, that would, that would make some major changes. Yeah, that will. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I think that's coming, but we'll see. Yeah, I think the FDA has their hands full of this uh, uh, other other topic that we're all dealing with currently. Mm -hmm. Is the time for your recipe, Blaine? I think so. I think it's time for our recipe. Yes, it Show is. and tell? Show and tell. All right. all right. So 
I like simple and easy. left. Did you eat them all, Blaine? Or? I know I have to. Even though I disappeared a couple of times, I wasn't going to eat those. No, I wasn't going to. Eat those. Yeah. Um, so, a simple, big, nice recipe. Um, we're going to put it up on the site. Um, it's called Hemp Hearts uh, Energy Bites, and they're no bake. So, you know, if I can do these things, anybody can do these things. So, this is what the end product looks like. If you can see, those are right there. How's that look? Okay. So, and they're really yummy and they're really easy to make and you can substitute about anything into these things. Um, so the first thing uh, you got to have is you got to have a couple of rolled oats. Could be quick oats, could be any kind of oats. This is what I use, Spartan brand. And probably, I don't know what the date on that one is. Uh, let's see. Oh. 1979 or something? Or? Uh, <laughs> looks like 19. Yeah. So not, not bad. <laughs> anyway, so use those. And then uh, use a half a cup of hemp hearts, or one cup of oats, a half a cup of hemp hearts. Um, now they say dates in here, but I didn't have any dates. I didn't want to go to the store, but I did have some, some figs. So I just cut up six figs and put them in there. Um, and then they talk about uh, three tablespoons pure maple syrup. And I'm going to give a shout out to one of our new uh, business members. Um, this is Sutton's, if you can see that. Sutton's Weed Farm. This is a locally produced um, maple syrup down by Brooklyn, and it has 60 milligrams of full spectrum hemp oil in it. Oh, that's and good stuff. Uh, it, it is wonderful, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Dave's going to carry it on his side or not, but um, we have that. And this is the company that's helping us with the hemp mass. This is the common, this is how we made the, the connection to the, to the hemp mass. So. So you do that and you use a little bit of vanilla extract of half a tablespoon, tea, excuse me, half a teaspoon. You can use a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, that's optional on that if you want. But, uh, and again, if you don't have maple syrup, you can try anything else. You can try regular maple syrup, just something to stick it to. But anyways, so you mix all that up in a bowl. They, she talks about the recipe here that she talks about in this, the, the lady's name that did this, her name is Julie. And so she's the simple vegetarianist is what her what her title is on that. So I got this off of the uh, off the websites where I just to just search for it. Um, so anyways, just mix all that up. She again, she said use a, a food processor, but you can just do it by hand. That's how I did it, and it comes out really good. And then I put them in the refrigerator for about an hour, and they're yummy. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> gotta eat those two. Gotta eat them. Right. They're damaged now. Yeah, yeah. So that's the standard overplay. There you go. Ready? Are you ready? There you go. So everybody can smell that and taste that, right? So uh, that's kind of uh, what I've got for today. Um, you know, we're excited to keep moving ahead. There's um, just some things that are going on in the background. So you know that uh, we're doing a little bit of research with some of the hemp stock. I'm going to try to make that with some, uh, use that in a feed mix here next week or so. So we're doing some things behind the scenes. Um, the grain that I have, I'm going to make into some oil. We're going to try some experiments with that. So, so yeah, so we're keeping moving ahead and we're keeping doing things. I'm going to look forward to being able to uh, get out and about after the, on the 15th. Uh, look forward for that. So, all right. How are we doing on time? Well, yeah, ahead. one, Blaine, I'm going to, I want to share out a couple of resources on the IHAMP Michigan website just to make sure everyone's aware. Okay. So, you know, we, we do field a lot of phone calls, and, or I do, and uh, I always point people here. So let me see, are we, you seeing my screen okay? Let's see, let's get this yeah. out of it. Yeah. So, you know, we changed up the website, and, and these top three are actually buttons. So when you join as an IHEMP business member, you're automatically entered into, we, we set you up, uh, in, in the business directory. Uh, we also have an industry map. We have some people reach out and ask, uh, well, where's, where, where's someone close to me? You know, so we have this map that you can view and you can, um, it's a little finicky, but um, you can click on, or do this little drop down. So look for processors. And, you know, these are processors in Michigan, you know, so a nice little resource there to, to uh, find items. And then we have a 
super affordable way to promote your events or products through a classified listing. And um, so we have classifieds that are available, you know, to, to uh, post, you know, on our classified listing. So I just want to share that out. And uh, in the emails that we send out after the show, Mike does a great job doing a little bit of video ed editing on the, our show. And I will have a link to, there'll be a permanent home for the IHEMP hour where you can always go back to the website and see the uh, login information for the following week's show and the content um, for the prior show. So I hope that's helpful. So, any more questions? Uh, Jeremy has a question. Uh, oh, Jeremy, Plain, you mentioned research on the animal feed. Uh, is that the livestock, such as cattle, are more so focused on goats? We have received quite a few inquiries for animal feed. And yeah, talk about animal feed and grain, Plain. Okay. So, right now, um, hemp can't be used in animal feed if they're going into the marketplace. Um, you have your own animals, you can do that. Um, that's not a problem, you can feed the grain. Uh, this case, again, we're talking about actually feeding the stock of the plant. Um, so again, your own chickens, your own backyard stuff, not a problem, you can, you can mix that in with it. But if it's going into the marketplace, then it can't be used in that because it's not approved yet for a feed supplement on that. So that's what the basis is on that. Um, but then we, we're going to be using the cake as well from the oil that I'm going to make. We're going to try to use some of the cake in the mix in some feeds as well. So, yeah, and we'll we'll let everybody know how that moves along this year. I know that there is another down in Indiana that I know that they did a project with some hogs last year, and it went all the way to the end, including a cadaver stuff, and then all that information to USDA. So, a Hemp Coalition. Uh, is, a, is a website you could go to and there will be some information there on what they're doing and what projects are going on. It doesn't seem to be updated recently, but um, I know there's a lot of good work they're doing in getting stuff to USDA. So when this stuff gets to be used to be able for, uh, for livestock feed, it'll be a big need for that. So, And I do know that there is um, both fiber and grain going in this year in the state. Um, maybe that's something we need to talk about too so everybody can know that, um, figure out how to do that. Uh, mark that so that you're not you're knowing if neighbors around you are doing a CBD crop kind of thing. I used Driftwatch last year is where I put my um, my locations on. So maybe a show we might want to cover that topic maybe. Uh, and, and if anyone's interested in growing some hemp fiber as a uh, research test project this year, please reach out to us. We're coordinating a number of grows throughout the state because we really see that being you know, the future, you know, for outdoor grows. And uh, Jeremy, let uh, let Audrey know that I have not forgot about her and her working about um, stuff for the uh, horse bedding. Uh, we're working on that too. We're just trying to figure out how to get the best chop and use it. So tell her I haven't forgot about her. I haven't. Okay. All right. Very good. I don't see any more questions. I think we can wrap up on time. All right. Thanks, everybody. And again, yummy bites, yummy bites. <laughs> All right. And you know, on the homepage of IHEMP Michigan, you'll see uh, mm. linked up the recording for prior shows and uh, you know those posts. So you know we try and keep the website updated. Okay, thanks everyone, and we'll see you next week. What